I've made a few videos now walking through some of the challenges on the Port Swigger Web Security Academy, and hopefully some of those have been helpful to anyone who's getting into this kind of stuff and is learning about hacking and application security. This is probably going to be the last one of these videos that I'm going to make about the Web Security Academy for at least a little while, but there was one more topic that I feel like doesn't get talked about that much in these kind of like beginner tutorials, and it's a pretty easy thing to check, and it's an easy thing for developers to miss when they're building websites like this. So I just wanted to make one more video about the Web Security Academy going over one more topic before I move on to other things. And that topic is directory traversal. If you want to read the learning path from Web Security Academy where they go in depth on all of the little details about directory traversal and what you can do with it, then I'll post the link of that in the description below. But basically, as you can see in this example, a website will call a file. So in this example, it's file name equals gif.png. But we can mess with that parameter in the URL so we can actually go and access other files in the file system and not just those files that the website wants us to access. So I'm just going to jump into the first lab, file path traversal simple case. And if we read the instructions, it says this lab contains a file path traversal vulnerability in the display of product images. To solve the lab, retrieve the contents of the slash Etsy slash password file. So we're going to open up our trusty friend Burp Suite, and we're going to launch that lab and then open the URL that it gives us in the browser inside Burp Suite. And when we do that, we see this little shop that has a bunch of these pictures, these items that are for sale, and we can just click around and navigate the site so we can get some traffic into our Burp Suite history. So we can click on view details and see that it shows us this little picture and it has a description. And because the description of the lab told us, we know that the vulnerability is going to be in the display of product images, but we might not necessarily know that going into a real life scenario. So to discover this, if we didn't know that ahead of time, we need to look in the HTTP history and we're gonna look at the URLs and we're going to look for something like this where there's a file name and then a JPEG or whatever file name it might be calling in whatever other website. Also, just one thing to note, you might not be seeing these JPEG file names showing up in your history if you're following along. And you might want to go up to the filter in the top left corner and make sure you have show all clicked. That way it's not going to be filtering out anything. Now that we know our request that it's calling this file name that we want to look at for a potential directory traversal, we're going to right click our request and send it to repeater. And if we send that request, it's going to respond with a bunch of characters that we can't read because it's just an image. But if we click render, we see it's just this little image, but we don't really care about what it's supposed to give us. We're only interested in how we can manipulate this file name in the URL to access something else. Specifically, to solve the lab, we need to access slash Etsy slash password. Now something you need to know in order to do this kind of thing is naturally you need to know how to traverse a directory. So if you don't have much experience with the command line, you might not know how you go about moving around in the directory structure if you're on a terminal. So to look at a very basic example, I've booted up this little Linux VM that I have, and I've just created a couple directories and a file. So right now we're in the desktop directory, as you can see right here. And if I type ls, which just lists the contents of a directory, if you didn't know, we see that there's this directory that's inside the desktop. It's called directory1. And if I type cd, which is to change directory, and go inside directory1 and hit ls again, I see that inside that directory we have one file and we have another directory. And if I cd into that second directory, now I see there's another file. So as you can see right here, we have gone down two different layers of directories from where we started in desktop. So how do we get back to where we started? We need to use that cd command again to change directory. And in order to go back one level, we're going to type dot dot. And as you can see, that pushed us up one level back to directory one. But let's get back into directory two. What if we don't want to do that over and over again to get back to the desktop directory? What if we just want to go directly there? Well, we can do dot dot slash dot dot. And that's going to take us back two levels. And that puts us all the way back in the desktop directory. So we can use that to access different files as well. 
So if we're back in that directory two where we had that file2.txt, let's imagine that we have a web application where there's a URL that calls file name equals file2.txt. Well, we want to access file one, not file two. And if you remember, file one is not in directory two, which is where we are now. File one is in directory one. So if we just changed file name from file two to file one, it's going to try to access file one, but all that is in this directory is file two. So when it looks for file one in this location, it's not going to find it. So we have to tell the file name to look back one directory with two dots, slash, and then file1.txt. So that was a quick, dirty explanation of how you can move around a directory structure. If you want to go back to the learning path that I have in the description below, that will give you a much better explanation going more into detail. But just as a little crash course, that is kind of the idea of what we want to do. And again, going back to the instructions, in order to solve the lab, we need to access slash Etsy slash password. The only problem is we don't know where this 30.jpg file is in relation to that slash Etsy slash password. So we're going to have to do a little bit of trial and error. So the first thing I'm going to try is just put the slash Etsy slash password directly in the file name because maybe we get really lucky and for whatever reason that 30.jpg is in the root of the directory so just doing slash etsy slash password will get us directly to where we need to be. So I'm going to delete 30.jpg and I'm going to replace it with slash etsy slash password and I'm going to send the request no such file. So let's back up one level. So we're going to do dot dot slash etsy slash password send that no such file and we're just going to keep doing this until we find where we need to be because no matter what eventually we will find the root of the file structure which is what this first slash means without anything in front of it that is the very top of the file structure so if we put enough dot dots in there we will eventually get to the very root and then that slash etsy slash password will get us to where we need to be And we eventually got there. So here is the contents of that slash Etsy slash password file. And if you go back to the browser, it should now say that you have solved the lab. So this is a very simple type of vulnerability that you can check for on any sort of website that is calling an image or anything like that. And on any website that has pretty good security, they're probably going to have some permissions and some firewall rules and things like that in place that are going to prevent you from accessing parts of the directory structure that you're not supposed to. But a lot of times web developers get lazy and they don't implement things properly and you might find something like this. So like I said at the beginning, this is probably going to be the last video I make from the Web Security Academy just because I feel like I've covered several of them at this point and I should probably move on to something different. But if there is a specific topic or a specific lab that anyone wants me to go over, I might consider making another video about it in the future. But I hope these were helpful and if anyone is just getting started on Web Security Academy or just trying to learn how to become a pen tester or learning about application security. I hope this kind of gets you on the path of learning about more of these things and doing more of these labs.